Hi again Globalians! In this lesson, let us discover how living and non-living things interact for survival in the intertidal zone. The intertidal zone is the area where land meets the sea between high and low tide zones. It is covered with water at high tide and exposed to air at low tide. Its communities are found in sandy beaches and along rocky shorelines. Like the estuaries, the intertidal zone is divided into several zones starting near dry land with the splash zone, a usually very dry area, and moving down to the littoral zone which is usually underwater. As marine biologists divide the intertidal zones and clearly separate them into the following subzones, let us start with the high tide zone and know the organisms that live in this area. In the middle tide zone, salinity is slightly higher than ocean levels. However, wave action is generally more extreme than the high tide and spray zone. While the low tide zone is only exposed at low tide and for a longer period of time during extremely low tides, this area is abound with life and there is also a great biodiversity. In the intertidal zone, there is a wide variety of organisms. These organisms that live here can adapt to harsh environments due to difficult daily changes in moisture, turbulence of water, temperature, and salinity.
Humans harvest animals and plants from the intertidal zone for food or for home aquariums. Moreover, many shells, especially those of marine mollusks, are collected as souvenirs by some people who visit the ocean coast. This has resulted in a decrease in organisms in some areas. Pollution poses threats to tidal pool animals and plants. Increased development in coastal regions can also damage the pools through the introduction of contaminants. Intertidal zones are important for marine organisms to continue breeding and existing. It is where organisms get food and nourishment. It is also the habitat of a diverse marine life. Humans also benefit from intertidal zones because they serve as places of recreation and relaxation. They also rely on marine life for food and for their livelihood. Thus, it is the responsibility of humans to protect intertidal zones so that the next generation may still benefit from them. Always bear in your mind that in the ecosystem, everything is connected. What we do to one organism can affect other organisms. I hope you learned a lot in this chapter, Globalians. In our next lesson, you'll be recognizing the role of force and motion in your daily life and connect the scientific concepts with your everyday experiences. See you online!